Hello, welcome to the Honest War Gamer. I'm your host, Rob. Today's show with the Twitch chat, where we're having a very normal Friday because Games Workshop have just done their LVO, Las Vegas Open, um, which is like a co opted Games Workshop side event uh, where they do reveals uh, of miniatures and releases that are coming up. And that's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited uh, because one of the things that I love about generally wargaming is I love new minis. I love new minis. Uh, I love them to bits. So I'm super excited to see that. Uh, I also love like new directions with games or even new games returning. So I don't know what we're going to see right now, but I'm excited to go. So we're going to jump straight in here. I didn't I didn't do the 5 a.m. 5 a.m. was the wrong time to do a reveal because it was both too early and too late. 3 o'clock, I'll stay up. I'll stay up. 6 o'clock, I'll get up. But 5 o'clock, not doing it. That was too much. So let's go through and look at what they revealed. So all of the previews in one go. And I'm hoping we can see individual pictures. So first up, we're going to start with Kill Team Nightmare. I don't know what this is. So this is one of the Kill Teams. So I think this is our new Mandrakes uh, that you can see. But we've also got some Night Lords. And I'm sure these were previously shown. Um, I'm sure it was previously shown. Ooh, pretty nice. These definitely were shown before, so we can skip this. But these new models are Mandrakes, and they obviously remind us a lot of the Age of Sigmar Shadow Stonkers. So Daughters of Cain uh, had Shadow Stonkers, and they look exactly like that. I will say, though, these are fucking good. I would argue that it would be very difficult to tell that that's a 40k model. I don't know about anyone else. I don't want to know. I, I don't want to... I don't wanna, I don't want anyone else to think that, but like I'm going to say that, and I I have already seen some of the other reveals as well, and I would say one of the things that I'm um, I think is going to happen over the next few years is you're going to see like the age of sigmarification of 40k. They're going to be like like I mean Marines are going to sell forever, but I think they're going to we're going to see a little bit more of that, right? And this is obviously super popular um, because for a long time age of sigma has just been winning the model race consistently these look fantastic paint job is great uh fairly blocky like you see from games workshop minis nowadays uh so they've got these like very harsh angles which the edge highlight in painting does kind of like it adds on to but like they don't do texture well uh so this is like meant to be skin this is fine uh it's painted the texture on a lot of negative space a lot of negative space uh, if anyone doesn't know what negative space is, it's just a good way of painting if you're good at painting, which I'm not. And then they've released uh, <laughs> a piece of terrain. Like, there's no one losing their mind over this piece of terrain. It's just a bit of Mechanicum stuff, I guess. Um, so I would say that that's underwhelming. Uh, but all of Games Workshop's terrain at this point is very, very uh, underwhelming. Under underwhelming. Okay, cool. All right. All right. I'm going to give that. I'm going to rate that. Chat. Uh, and also, if you're watching this back on YouTube, let me know what your rating is for this. I'm going to give the Kill Team box, I'm going to give it like for a Kill Team box, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Personally, for me, I think nowadays, a lot of the audience for Games Workshop should be thinking more towards like Warcry and Kill Team. And it's not me telling you what you should do. I just think that like the concept of building and painting 10 different miniatures is really attractive versus building... 12 of the same space marine as an example and similarly like these mandrakes and that's a fantastic box you and your friend to play against each other so i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten uh is what i'm gonna say i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Oh, these are the current uh mandrakes let's have a little look <laughs> they're not bad actually the current mandrakes not bad I'd say not bad. Okay, uh, let's go next. I uh, saw so what we've got next. Uh, Nagashasir is a central city in the realm of death. A moody place lit by ethereal torches and an entire cast of incandescent night horn. Uh, keep the lights on in the infusions of magic and flesh. Now these pyre geists have surfaced in the Gurish jungle and the only warriors truly equipped to take them down. The channel elemental essence of Ahishi's rivers are the Yurandaland river blades. Okay, the Y is not silent, I've decided. Okay, so uh, this is a Warcry box. Ooh, Lumineth versus Nighthorn. Well, this is spicy. Very spicy. But the Lumineth look very different. Uh, okay, let's see if we get some more details. A clashing of the fate of the Narwood. Okay. These inventive, the inventive cruelty of Nagash has created endless twisted torments, which he inflicts upon the souls of those who wronged him in life. For the M the embalmers, alchemists, and holy men, and women who attempt to preserve the souls of the dead with sacred fires and blessed ungants, 
The punishment is thus, eternal consumption by balefire. Okay. These sorry souls are tasked with keeping the endless braziers of Nagish's era light, filling them... Oh, so these are the, these are the lamp lighters. Um, the lamp lighters of the, of the Nighthorn. These are excellent. Okay, so he's a phenomenal sculpt. Really good. Uh, we've got the flames. This is a nice addition because, like, with the Nighthorn models, often you get a lot of... Um, you get a lot of the robes, and it just kind of stops. So having the addition of the flames is actually really quite nice. Um... This is a bit of a problem, though, for the the other units. While I really like the sculpts, <laughs> look at this guy giving him the old pokey. Get out. Pokey him out. That's great. I love this. Um, the problem with the Nighthorn... Uh, so, uh, the problem with the Nighthorn aesthetic and the silhouette of the Nighthorn, uh, and we talk about that a lot on the show, is that the silhouette is very like linear. Other than the black coach, it's just ghosts with some sort of weapon and while each one of these sculpts is individually fantastic one of the the like dehumanization of the ghosts means that like if it's like in comparison in comparison to the you know the kill teams like they're all space marines but like i think each one has more of a more of an identity you know and same with the mandrakes in many ways I think each one of them, I mean, maybe I'm pushing, maybe I'm really stretching there. I think Nighthaunt lack a tad bit of, they have a very strong singular identity, but then they don't have, a, like, or, like, you know, a theme, but they don't have a very strong individualist identity. Um, but I think the theme itself is obviously stunning. Uh, this is great. So who are they up against? It's interesting. The warrior monks of the Eurandalan Temple stand in opposition to the Scorched Spectres. These are elementary Lumineth who are dedicated to the elemental spirits that embody Quiche, worshipping the rivers of the mortal realms. Oh, so this is our first river temple. So this has been something that's been rumoured for a while. Is it we're going to get river temple elves? So the, um, not high elves, the Lumineth realm lords have different uh, temples. Uh, and we've already got the uh, the Earth Temple and the Temple of the Air. Uh, and now we're seeing the good old uh, Temple of the River, uh, which is interesting. So we do have, like, lighter armor. Um, we're getting some more Duelist characters. And these are very cool. Very fun. Is it just odd to me? Or do they look very differently scaled? Like, they look like... They look smaller uh, than I would expect Lumineth to look. I expect Lumineth to look a little bit taller, a little bit more haughty. Um, but normally they're more heavily armored, so maybe the armor makes up for it. This guy's having the best time. Can we talk about this? This guy at the front, he is absolutely loving life, chopping heads off and just vibing. <laughs> He's having the best time. This is excellent. I love this. This is adorable. Um, okay, these are great. These are great. Uh, they've got nice paint schemes. They're quite interesting. Um... Uh, so yeah cool and then there's a bit of terrain uh, which doesn't impress me much i, I apologize to everyone at home uh, who doesn't i don't want to be this guy who doesn't have access to a 3d printer but even the most basic fdm printer is going to print terrain like this and there are nine thousand sculpts available out there now uh, so this is fine but not something that particularly bothers me either way uh, and then you get, obviously get a book for it okay i'm going to give this a good Mm, I'm going to give this like a 7 out of 10, which is pretty, you know I love Age of Sigmar way more than 40k. Um, Nighthawk kind of let this box down a little bit for me, I think. Like, it's cool, definitely, very themey, um, but I think it, that just lets it down a little bit. And I don't want the big bit of terrain that's silly and useless. So I'm going to throw that. Compared to the last box, which was the City of Sigmar guys, which I thought was stunning, and the, uh, and the Gorges, which I thought were great, and a big more pit... Uh, I think this one's like this one's not as good, uh, but I'll give it like a, a seven or eight or something like that. The name amused me. What's it called? Uh, the the name is the Pyre and Flood. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> that is funny. All right, okay, that's funny. Pyre and Flood is funny. That's <laughs> Whoever thought that uh, bought themselves a cheese toasty after that, they were like, I've done this right, hot and wet. <laughs> okay. Ooh, the crunt. Crew Hunting Pack Army Set. Okay, now this. Now, I've already heard this is only half of the crew that they're releasing, uh, which is pretty amazing. So here you can see. Thanks to last year's roadmap, we already know Codex Tower Empire is on its way. It'll be available at first in the awesome Crew Hunting Pack Army Set. The book comes with a fancy full art cover for Ethereal. Uh, for an Ethereal. Oh, no one cares about the fancy books. Okay, let's look at the minis because i got something to say now. And I'm going to say... 10 out of 10. 
Like, I'm just saying 10 out of 10. You know, we've... I love the Imperium element, obviously, of 40k. Otherwise, you can't like 40k. I really like the Imperial Guard. Uh, I think that aesthetic is really strong in loads of different ways. I think it's really positive. I love, like, Inquisition stuff. I think that's really, really cool. I love the Mechanicum. Obsessed with the Mechanicum. But this is what I wanted from 40k. And... You know, you, you want them to, like, do an entire, like, oh, by the way, we're just going to get weird about orcs for five years. Like, you know, just marines are happening in the background. And you want this. Now, and very much like when they release Beast Snaggers, I think it's just going to be like a one and done. There's another half coming out, uh, is what they've said, and you can run an entirely crew-based army. And this is the most I've wanted to get into 40k in a long time. This is exactly what they need to be doing for 40k. They don't need another like redone space marine they need this this is what they need to do they need to make me like sit back and be like okay you're serious i thought you were just gonna do marines until we were all dead i thought i thought the earth would burn to ashes until this and then let's actually take a moment to look at the miniature because it's a strategy for getting people more excited about 40k this is the one right this is it and now what do i think of the release stunning what do I think of the minis? 11 out of 10. It's everything I wanted. We've got a wooden handled pistol. Uh, we've got uh, like a whip chain thing. Um, the alternative paint job is good. The bow is excellent. Uh, the spikes. Uh, it's obviously like still um, fairly like uh, like detextured because that's what Games Workshop does because uh, of its process. But that's a good sculpt, right? And whew, I'm... I'm in love with it, right? And I was like, if that was just it, I would be sad. But it's not just it. And then they get s serious, okay? Now I've got this guy. They're accompanied by a vicious flesh shaper, masters of ritual butchery, um, a strong personal pride in guiding the carnivorous practices of their fellow crew and ensuring only the finest genetic material. Uh, just, again, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. This is... This is this is inspirational stuff. This is what they should be doing. This is what Age of Sigmar has been doing for years. They've just been, Age of Sigmar has just been like, oh, we're going to just do something you've never seen before. Get ready. And now we're finally seeing that, them do that in 40k. No more stupid, whoever's in charge of Marines at the minute is like on a weird one. No more buggies or like bunkers or like artillery emplacements. None of that. Yeah. Like none of those weird rocket launcher guys. This is what they should be doing. This is what they should be doing. And then it gets crazy the new kit is packed with character and gives carnivorous uh the carnivores several dynamic poses they also have a new trick in the form of tangle bomb launcher i don't care about the rules 40k's rules are not very good at the minute uh, but then look boom look at the models little naked bros just with like makeshift weapons but what's nice about it is not makeshift imperium makeshift it's like homesteader wasteland ranger kind of fallout you know like a a, a cheap a cheap um, sci-fi channel uh, bad guy. And I'm vibing on that. Um, the Baby Hound. The Baby Hound is excellent. We'll come back to him in a minute. This is great. This is great. It's giving me big Star Wars vibes as well. Like, giving me big Star Wars vibes, uh, which is quite interesting. And then we've got some different color schemes, which look great. The guns are good. I love the little silly blades at the bottom. Ridiculous. Um, uh absolutely great and then they've got their own little guy now i have heard directly from dw well people at games workshop is that games workshop realized that little guys sell very well that lord of cheese thanks for resubscribing yeah it looks like abe's odyssey of course it looks like abe's odyssey it's probably where they ripped the original crew off from right but abe, it does look like abe's odyssey that's great and then it gets better uh, the iconic Crute weapons platform returns with a glow up of the century. Crutox is a hulking beast, a subspecies. Absolutely dunking. Dunking, these things are. These are so good. So, so good. Uh, so, And then this guy, the raised up version, where there's like a melee version. This is what they should be making. Absolutely. This is what they do. This is what they should be doing. Like, this is it. Just stop making marines for six years. You haven't got to make any marines. Make some of the backpack. That's fine. Then just stop. 
Just say to yourself, how fucking weird can we get for the next six years? Go down that route and everyone will be so much more keen. They should be trying to diversify their market and diversify their player base. They should be trying to do that for two reasons. Number one, it stops all of the blue check, black Templar avatar freaks on the internet being fucking weird. Yeah, and making it so women don't feel like they can walk down the street. And in addition, yeah, it gets all the fucking spicy, awesome people to actually play their fascist coded game like gets like i could play this and not think i'm playing like like a fucking right-wing fantasy yeah instead i can feel like i'm playing space soldiers and having a good time right so just have a good time this is so good these are 11 out of 10 11 this is exactly what they should be creating exactly um for every crew this are 1000 marines i know and there's more of them but we're better so uh, also, less problem right than G-Sit the Cult. <laughs> New models, Game Tonians. This is every Templar player's worst nightmare. I know. <laughs> this, is, this is heartbreaking. Right, this is Xenos. <laughs> Xenos? Disgusting. Anyway, these are stunning. These are stunning. If I had the time, I'd like this is where I'm at right now. I'm currently working on uh, an AOS army, Cities of Sigma. I'm working on Old World Army, Warriors of Chaos. If I had the time, like if what like Old World hadn't just come out, this would be straight in the basket. If I was like, it's time for a new. It's, also, I really don't like the rules for 40k. I mean, I think the game, I think it's the worst of all the games that are currently out from Games Workshop rules wise. So that's only if you're a mechanics nerd. I think the setting is still great. I think the minis are great. The community is wonderful. Um, this would be straight in my basket. This would be the hot ticket, eleven out of ten. So, and then this is only half of the release apparently. So, I mean, I don't think they're doing badly on this preview, uh, to be honest. Uh, okay, now, we got, now we're getting some spicy Age of Sigmar stuff, uh, which is fun. Uh, 40k's got kind of dull. Of course it has. Of course it has. Like, you need to spice it up. You need to make it interesting. Okay. Uh, uh, have you tried? No, I haven't. All right, though Marathi Kane betrayed Sigma in a selfish pursuit of godhood, which she achieved. Goddesshood, by the way, she's a lady. Uh, not all of her kin worship the Shadow Queen. Uh, for the help of beleaguered Sigmarites in Ashgreen Grand, arrives on the Mindai Black Wings of Kruthsa the Crone Seer. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to lie. This might be one of the hardest reveals I've seen in a long time. Like. I. You know what I mean? Like I, like, I personally don't play Daughters of Cain. So, and it is literally a classic solo foot character, which we've been talking about a lot. So it's just one model for a range. Like, last time they got one High Gladiatrix, and now they get one of these. But this singular mini is banging. Uh, great. Loads of toe action. We're all in love with that. Um, and iconic. The pose is great. The crows are good. Um... Every element of this is, like, evocative. Like, I want to know why they've got wings. I want to know what they're... Like, and the staunch kind of, like... I love the the line of the the staff is excellent. This is really good. Yeah, it looks like something from a Greek myth. I think that's good. The story is really good, too. Oh, my God. Carutha was a loner. <laughs> oh, no, she's an emo. Oh, no. <laughs> The darkness calls to me. You won't understand my feelings. <laughs> uh, great model. She blinded herself. Why? Okay. Krutha was a loner in the sisterhood of Cain from the early days as she cultivated an obsession with Marathi Heg, the ancient crone goddess who was swallowed along with the rest of the elven pantheon by Sanesh. She felt a, per a presence visiting her in her dreams and wholeheartedly believed it was Morai Hag. For this, she was ridiculed, beaten, and ostracized. She did not abandon her obsession, and her mania reached its peak when she found the circle of Morai Hag deep in the temple of Ulgu. By donning this headdress when it's inverted spikes, that she sacrificed her sight, hoping to receive the gift of truth from the crone goddess. Also, she blinded herself. Whoa. That is very grim dark, as they say. Okay, nice. This miracle didn't come to pass, and Krutha was distraught for many years. Only th when Marathi Cain attained godhood and slit the belly of Sanesh with his devotion, a sliver of divinity was freed, and Krutha received a sable wings and the gift of prescience. <gasps> so there's another goddess, potentially. A rival goddess. 
Now Crudita is a crone seer, accompanied by flocks of carrion birds who act as raw seeing eyes across the mortal realms. Visions of futures and yet unseen flood her mind, and though she struggles to discern precisely how each future comes to pass, Mariah Hegg subtly guides her with omens. And she is the lead character of Book 5, Shadow of the Crone. You can read about Crudita's scattered visions in the future Dawnbringers Book 5, as they bring to aid to the Twin Cell Crusading Garan and to Hammerhall, which slowly is coming to the King's Blood Curse. The book covers the Crunceus Priors, an army of renown for worshippers of Daughters of Cain, and another for the prosecutors of Hammerhall, as well as the fourth part of the Twin Tailed Crusade Path of Gropak. No one cares about that. There are rules for Stronghold Assault. Yes, yes, siege battles, siege battles. A new match play battle plaque that pits teams of four players in clash between competing redoubts. <laughs> yes. Uh, Murray Hegg's Sable Wing Prophet is first available as part of a box of stuff you don't want. Okay. Uh, let's look at this as a box. So you get some Witch Elves. You can always use Witch Elves because they're Witch Elves or Sisters of Slaughter. And some Doomfire Warlocks, which you can sell to people in the Old World so that they can use them in their illegal Dark Elves army. Uh, pretty great. Uh, okay. I'm going to say... Uh, so I guess I've got to judge it as a release, right? The Sculpt, 10 out of 10. The release, though, 4 out of 10. Because obviously it's like buried inside of a box of other stuff. So I'm going to say release 4 out of 10. Because you're just price gouging me for wanting the model. But the actual model itself, 10 out of 10. The excitement about a new Dawnbringers book is excellent. This was apparently going to be our chaos book. So a book with loads of different chaos stuff in there. So I'll be interested to see. Um, and this is the last book, book 5. Unless there's a book 6, which I don't think there is. Pretty interesting. Uh, what's in Buff Doom 5 specifically in this? Yes. <laughs> Just everyone in Agency Mile, like, please buy my Doom 5 Warlocks. Uh, <laughs> um, were Dark Riders uh, out of production till this? No, they've been in production the whole time. They've been in this. Okay, next up is Callus and Toll. <gasps> oh my god. While the Twin Tail Crusade continues on its journey into the inhospitable wilds of Ashgreen Garan, the Crucible of this great endeavour is under attack from within and without. Cask of fine wine marked with King's Blood Seal continue to be smuggled. That's like a, a fleshy of course curse. To deal with the problem this big, uh, this big, you need a ragtag band of heroes. Oh my god, the A-team. Led by no-nonsense witch hunter in a tall hat. Luckily, that's what you get. Oh my god, the saviors of Cinderfall are tasked with scouring the King's Blood Curse from the Cinderfall district and saving Hammerhall. They're led by veteran witch hunter Hanavit Hall and his long standing ally, the ex free guild officer Amand Kalis. You'll recognize them from their Black Library exploits and Warhammer Plus animation. No one has that. Uh, to get to the bottom of the plot to collapse the Hammerhall from within, well, these are excellent. These are great. Uh, they've all got like a little key motif, I've noticed. Um, it's fucking Cal Jericho. <laughs> Doom Fire Medical Vote. Sigma Narco Squad. It is the Sigma Narco Squad. 100%. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, it's a great witch hunter. Like, I, like this is kind of what I meant when I was getting at the the Night Haunt. Like, you couldn't, of the pack of Night Haunt minis that were out, you couldn't pick out an individual Night Haunt dude, if that makes sense. There was, like, a leader character, obviously, but you couldn't. But this is exactly what I want. Um, I, I think I saw a criticism online of like uh, units being too complex, which I don't, I can't adhere to at all. Like I recognize that if I was to try and paint 70 of these for an army, it would take me a long time. I understand that. I do. But also like, I don't want this to have no detail. I want, you know, quote unquote, one of the better miniature uh, companies in the world uh, producing miniatures at that level. I don't want them just like, I don't want them like teamooing it and just shipping like, you know, horrible crap that steals your credit card information. I want high end miniatures. High end minis is what I want. And this is exactly what I've got here. I have a high end sculpt that looks excellent. If I wanted to, he could just be a witch hunter inside uh, an old world army as well. Could be a witch hunter. Could just be a regular leader of a unit of steel helms uh, for some story that I'm crafting. Could even be like a mage. You know, using, like, uh, a battle mage for Cities of Sigmar, just doing some sort of stuff. Excellent. Next up, great. Great model. Great model. Dual pistol, fully armoured. This is what I want. This is exactly what I want. It's got a pouch full of coins and a head full of fucking uh, hope. That's what he's got. These are great. So good. Uh, they're so good. Uh, then we've got uh, a lady. Looks like a lady assassin with a rope. These look a lot like... Has anyone, 
Has anyone watched the TV show Shadow and Bone? Is it Shadow and Bone? There was like a Netflix series recently where it was like, no, okay, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Um, okay, like, but anyway, so uh, she's like, what, an assassin lady or something? This is, these look fun. And then uh, we have <laughs> the lady from Necromunda uh, and they were jelly. They didn't get to make Necromunda minis. So <laughs> they made some for Age of Sigma. <laughs> Uh, uh, these are just like these are just like Shadow and Bone I think they're just like Shadow and Bone maybe this is just me right I need the cat yes again Games Workshop have recognised that like look at the response Games Workshop have recognised that a little guy with a mini is going to sell more like it's taken a long time and I'm not mad about it I'm over the moon that this is what we're getting right Um, uh, absolutely obsessed with it which is great and then uh, we have just a Stormcast bro with a giant key. I thought Fire Slayers were all about keys. Keys aren't cool, right? But he's fine. He's a good looking Stormcast sculpt with a Griffound, like all of them. Uh, so this is fine. Uh, he's fine. I'm going to give this a strong 9 out of 10 uh, for these guys. And they're also going to be inside the Shadow and Crow book, I think, which is fun. Oh, they've got their own book. Callous and Toll by David Annadale. All right, that's fun. Okay, I'm going to give that a strong nine. Uh, what we got next? We've got some Zondron's Gravebreakers uh, coming to Warhammer Underworlds. Okay. Oh, dude. Dude, they, this Necromancer is... Okay. I mean, I don't know how people are underwhelmed by this release. Like, it's just a single model Necromancer. I understand. But a single model Necromancer is cool. Like, if you need, a like, you know, an almost perfect necromancer for an army, it's kind of perfect, like, to be honest. Um, uh, the old ones uh, are better anyway. Wow, necromancer with hat. I don't know if it's better. This is very good, though, right? New soul for a hero. Yes, I mean, there's also that. And then there's some zombies. And the zombies themselves are great, but you kind of don't want zombies to be great. You kind of want zombies to be, like, as quickly to paint as possible. <gasps> What's this? Oh, a little werewolf. Okay, that's fun. <laughs> that's a great little kit. And, and there's some Warcry stuff no one cares about. All right, I'm going to give that... I mean, it's Underworlds. I'm just going to give it... like Where you just get some separate minis, I'm just going to give it like a 6 or 7 out of 10. 6, 6. I'm going to be, you know, fine. No, 5. It's just a mini, right? 5. Um. Uh, read the story before you rate it. Okay. Read the story before I rate it. Her story... Okay. True to his name, Death Gorge is an unpleasant... Okay, okay. Unlike many greedy souls who make the treacherous trek here for glory, the Gurish maid's Zondara Rivenheart journeys not for riches or honour, but for love. Hello. When the love of Zondra's life succumbed to a terrible curse, <gasps> she vowed to rescue him from an attorney as a beast, even going as far as to learn the secrets of necromancy. Accompanied by three undead thralls and her lover, Felaine, still in beast form. <gasps> oh my god. Uh, she has made the arduous journey to Death Gorge, determined to find a way to break the curse. Her cocktail of deathly and bestial magic is a lethal tool for battling through the frozen caverns. <sighs> I don't know if other creators have asked this, so I'm going to ask it. Do you think they still bang? It's an important question. It's not like the fact that they're introducing love into the setting is beautiful. And I love that. Okay, it's a healthy relationship. Defo still bang like Baldur's Gate level banging. Okay, <laughs> okay, all right. I needed to. Know. <laughs> I learned necromancy for love. A tale as old as time. It's true. Uh... <laughs> all right, okay. I'm gonna give it. I'm still gonna give it. I'm gonna give it six normally. No five because it's just a mini. But I'm gonna upgrade it to a six because it's got furry, furry banging. Furry banging a necromancer is not what I expected as a release. That's gonna be the YouTube thumb title. A furry bangs a necromancer question mark. <laughs> right now, furiously in different discords, fanfic is being written as fast as it can be. Yeah. Arr <laughs> the zombies mode. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Then finally, 
Uh, every release needs different clickbait title. Exactly. Uh, anyway, the highly trained, uh, well-equipped Warriors Solar Auxilia. So some of you may or may not know I have a Solar Auxilia Force. Um, way to present this like shit. Like, let's, let's, let's just be clear about that. That army shot is so deeply underwhelming. That is, <laughs> like, look at that matte gray, sorry, matte brown, slightly rubbly texture. <laughs> it looks so bad. <laughs> anyway, I have a Sir Auxilia army. I love Sir Auxilia. I'm super into this. The army set is packed with dependable infantry, sturdy armored tanks. So this is a new kit. So the kit on the right, and this is all in plastic, right? Um, it's a great way to start a new solar auxiliar army. New plastic kits being... Okay, so these are all plastic kits. So the kit on the right um, is absolutely cool. I love that kit. Um, you get the actual infantry. I love the infantry, although I don't think they've done a particularly great paint job on the infantry. TBH. Um, but that looks good. The, the, the paint job looks fine. Uh, and then we've got a Lehman Russ now as well. So the solar auxiliar battle group... Um, there are ten. Uh, there are two ten-man solar auxiliary las rifle sections. Look how good they look close up, though. That's what I mean. That 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 singular photo has done a terrible job for them. Up close, solar auxiliary are eleven out of ten, in my opinion. I absolutely love this range. Um, the paint is very bland. The paint is very bland. I really don't think they've tried that hard at all on the paint job. Like it's very underwhelming. Uh, mine are yellow, uh, which I think that's why I'm seeing this. Um, Mute colors don't do them justice. No, they really don't. They don't. Anyway, up close, you can obviously see how great they are. They've got this, like, diver bell kind of setup, which looks so cool. We've got a power fist. Like, they look like humans, which is super fun. Uh, and I really, really adore that about the Solar Auxilia. Really great. Really great. Just regular lads. That's my favorite thing about Solar Auxilia, they are just regular lads in, uh, in 40K, just trying to survive. Obviously, this is the Horus Heresy. Um, which is good. And then we've got a command group, which is pretty cool. The blade's good, so this, the like the Lord later character is really good. Uh, that's fun. Um, our Vox commander is great. I love that. <laughs> our little, our little uh, munitions guy is good. Ah, oh, these are fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, to safely ferry infantry around the battlefield, so we're going to use Draco uh, Dracosan armor transport. This reliable beast can carry 20 troopers. So good, so good, the Dracosan. And I think this was re-sculpted uh, by Owen. Um, I don't know if Owen re-sculpted, like, I think he re-sculpted this. I saw him post something on Twitter. Um, so if anyone wants to go check out Owen Abram uh, on Twitter, he just does loads of great stuff. Um, this is great to see. Uh, I love this vehicle. I love the return of it. It's one of my favorite vehicles from the Heresy slash 40K uh, because it looks like what it's trying to be, right? Like a World War tank, uh, but in the future which is very fun, um, and all of it, and some different options and pintle options. This is new. Now, I haven't seen this. This isn't what something that they did previously in resin, um, and this is new. This is quite fun. I guess it's like a Sentinel slash Dreadnought, but this is a really fun, fun mini. Very evocative. Missile launchers, the pistol mounted, like the pintle mounted, like, um, what's that, a Mortilaz? Uh, they did them for Ally. Okay. Uh, this is really good. Oh, look at the weapon options on top. Bro. Oh, my God. We can have dual missiles. Yes. All right. Great. And then what's this? Last in the set is a familiar face. Uh, though far more ornate than you may have seen before, the Lima Ross Battle Tank returns. The war courses show its solar auxiliary heritage with an extra trim, fancy details. Oh, so we get a Lehman Russ is back. Now, I'm not a f I've never been a fan of the Lehman Russ. I think it looks a bit derpy for, for Imperial Guard. So, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but having a much longer barrel definitely helps to start it out. Dozer blade. It looks better like a tank, I'm going to say, uh, which is good. And then what are these guys? Um, uh, the Velatari. Ooh, we got our upgraded guys. <gasps> nice. Uh, okay. Is there the axe version? No. Uh, no, I don't think there's a, they haven't shown off the axe version. Because they used to have... Did they have plasma culverns? They had different weapons, anyway. Limoros assault tank with different weapons. Oh, great. I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. This is a 9 out of 10. Like, I know... I'm not sure how the Heresy is doing as a game system right now. Um, but obviously, Games Workshop are not going to just make a bunch of plastic kits. 
and then not support the game. So if the game is like falling to pieces, they're going to eventually do a new edition, which might make me more excited. Um, did they not take pictures of the Axe version? They didn't take pictures of the Axe version. If there isn't pictures of the Axe version, then that's great. But I have both the Axe version and the gun variant multiple times. So like, there's nothing here that I need that's new for me. Oh, maybe the Command Core kit. Uh, but I think it's a great range. I love the Solar Auxilia. It's just, if you like Imperial Guard, you probably like the Solar Auxilia. It's cool if you're playing Horus Heresy as well, because then you get to be, you know, different. Everyone brings their Space Marines. You get to actually have a different type of army, which is super fun. Like, I love that. I love that you can, like, have a different style of army, which is good. Um, which is good. And, I, and I'm sure there will be more releases in the future for the Solar Auxilia, because they did have more. They had Ogrins, which are very cool, so I'd like to see the Ogrins return. They had a bunch of very small, wicked little tanks, and it'd be really fun to see those return in plastic as well. So this is great. I don't think I would pick it up for me, but I already have a Solar Auxilia army. If you were planning on playing the Horus Heresy, um, like, and you were like, I wanted something different, then I think Solar Auxilia. Or if you played the Horus Heresy and you wanted like a second army, I'd see the Solar Auxilia as definitely on my list. Uh, just because you get to be, you know, you, you get to mix it up, which I think is good. Uh, so I think that's great. Uh, that's another great release. Interesting. Ooh, okay. Uh, an interesting set of stuff released over the weekend, to be honest. Very interesting. Um, again, pfft, I don't think, I don't know who won. I don't know which game system won or if anyone won. Uh, Heresy got a great release. So Auxilia are banging. Age of Sigmar got some great models all through, uh, and the announcement of a new book. 40k got some smashing models, and they're in a great position as well. So, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like it was a solid release. Like, or at least, like, I mean, I'm so glad I didn't get up for 5 a.m. for it, right? But it's very good. There's a bunch of stuff in here. The focus, I think, the takeaway I think most people will have over the week is how good the crew army set is. But I mean, that's kind of my point about the crew army set. It's like that box is still going to be 25%, 30% of an actual 2,000 point 40k army. Whereas the release of the Pyre and Flood Warcry box is a, you know, a self-contained two army game. And the kill team boxes as well. And then there's just some great minis from Callus and Toll. Uh, and then again, Solar Auxilia is similar to, but you know, we've seen Solar Auxilia before. So I feel like Crew and 40k have, t you know, taken that away. Um, very, like, very cool. I See, this is, so I'd like to talk about this for a moment with Crew. I talked about this earlier as well. Like, people are like, there's only several Crew players. But like, as of yesterday, would you be like, hey Rob, do you want to collect Crew? I'd say no, because the Crew range, as I understand it, is like, three donkeys like i don't know what the range was but I, I remember when i when i had a tau army it was like a couple of different crew models and they looked awful like so i was like no i'm not i'm not, I'm not going to play crew because they look bad ask me today i'm a crew guy yeah <laughs> i think they look great right and that's kind of the point about them expanding out into other things it, like it's so refer they're so self-referential with their releases they're like oh everyone wants new space marines we should do space marines that everyone wants space marines like you can't engender a new audience unless you start creating into something for that new audience so uh like that's i like it, it's better if they start doing that over 2024 uh, and 25 and you know the future they need to start focusing outside of their core factions or their core fact like you know things and look at the popularity old world's a really good example old world's a good example where you know they release something and they're not even releasing new minis for it and people are still losing their minds so if they give you the opportunity to buy something that's different to the same thing they're shipping all the time i think it makes it more interesting anyway hope you enjoyed this reveal reaction i love of course to let uh, to find out what you all think so you can always uh, just leave comments like and subscribe and all that other stuff that would be great if you don't mind i've really enjoyed talking to the chat about it all uh, because i think it's cool uh, and i love talking to the chat about most things so thanks for watching the video